Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In our last video, I reviewed the standout features of Photometer for the Mac, as well as made a video on its disadvantages. If any of the questions I received on those videos are any indication, there is a good amount of confusion on what the difference is between Photometer for the Mac and Pixelmator Pro. I expected as much since there are so many overlapping features between both apps. So in today's video, we're going to be clearing up the confusion as I'm going to be talking about five reasons to use Photometer over Pixelmator Pro. In my next video though, I'll be turning the tables and be talking about the top five reasons to use Pixelmator Pro over Photometer. So let's get right into this. The first reason you want to use Photometer over Pixelmator Pro is the wider variety of AI masking tools. Photometer has more AI masking tools than Pixelmator Pro, and the most important of these is Select Sky, which as you can see here, is highly accurate and a real time saver. You can get the whole sky selected with just one click. Select Sky has a dual purpose though, as you can save time not only in selecting a sky, but also using it to select a foreground by inverting the sky selection. With Pixelmator Pro, you have no choice but to brush manually. A real pain, particularly if there are trees or, or other objects with fine detail in the horizon. So that type of case will be even more time consuming. Another great thing about Photometer's AI tools is it also has a linear gradient tool, which also works great for reducing the exposure of skies, particularly if Select Sky does not work. It also has a useful radial gradient tool, which is handy for selecting specific objects, just like the boats in the shot. Pixelmator Pro doesn't have any of these gradient tools. The second reason to use Photometer over Pixelmator Pro is the ability to easily refine a mask. If you want to add to or remove from a mask, Photometer has a much more intuitive workflow and takes less clicks than Pixelmator. For example, as you can see here, Select Sky made a mistake. No matter, you can just click the option button, click add, and then click brush. You can then use the brush to add to the mask. It's very intuitive. Another great thing about Photometer's refined mask workflow is modifying a mask is not limited to using a brush. You can also use AI tools. In this example, I want to specifically brighten the mountains and water to separate the subject from the background. For this, I'll use the color range tool. Notice it selected all the colors, but also included the sky and the subject. No problem, we can actually subtract the sky using Select Sky. And while we're at it, we can also subtract the subject. Now we have a much better mask. Let's brighten and add texture to the selection. So as you can see, it's much easier to do this type of selection with Photometer. If I use Pixelmator Pro and I use the color range tool, it works the first time. But if I want to apply the color range tool again, as you can see, it will not work. Same thing goes for select subject. Select subject will just make a new selection and not add to the selection as with Photometer. Another reason to use Photometer over Pixelmator Pro is Photometer has an app on all three platforms, while Pixelmator does not have a mobile app. This means you can start your editing process on an iPhone and finish off the editing on a Mac, and vice versa, with no penalty in performance or features. As I've mentioned in previous videos, all these edits are synced because the editing information is saved in the raw file itself. Another advantage of Photometer over Pixelmator Pro is it has a photo manager. If you edit a lot of raw files, 
it'll be useful to note that Photomator has a photo manager that allows you to navigate between photos, group photos with albums and folders, and favorite photos. Pixelmator Pro just supports one document at a time. Another reason to use Photomator over Pixelmator Pro is its better interface. In Photomator, as you can see here, a mask is indicated by a red overlay, which is far more intuitive than Pixelmator, which uses marching ants to indicate its selections. Also, Pixelmator Pro's quick selection brush behaves like a flood fill tool as it searches for edges and makes selections far away from the cursor point. Photomator has a more standard masking brush, which selects areas wherever your cursor is located. In addition, there are less clicks to do the editing. For example, as you can see here, as select subject is completed and the mask is created, we can immediately edit by dragging the tone sliders. In Pixelmator Pro, there's a few more steps. Once the subject is selected, I have to click Add Layer button, then click Color Adjustments, then go to the Color panel to make the adjustments. So there are more steps with Pixelmator Pro than with Photomator. So as you can see, Photomator has many advantages over Pixelmator Pro. It's not all roses for Photomator. You cannot put background blur on a photo. You cannot combine photos with exposure blending, nor can you do any compositing. All these tasks are designed for Pixelmator Pro. So when do you use Pixelmator Pro over Photomator? That'll be the subject of my next video, and do watch out for that. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate if you like, subscribe, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.